Welcome to 30 Days of Retouching. Today, we're gonna to show you how to dodge and burn and sharpen your portraits. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna be finishing up our portrait retouching. So we've already done blemish removal. We've done frequency separation. Now it's time to dodge and burn and sharpen our photo. These simple techniques are gonna help draw more attention to your subject, and we're gonna be focusing on your subject's eyes. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So we're back to our sample image. Now you can actually download this image as well as the PSD on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So up until now, let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we've done here. We started off here. We did some blemish removal and then frequency separation to smooth out the skin. Now. It's time to dodge and burn, which basically adds highlight and shadow information and can help things look a little bit more polished and three-dimensional. It's really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna start with dodging. So let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit and I'm gonna hit Controller Command I to invert the layer mask. So the key to this technique is using a soft edge brush with a low flow. And you wanna make sure that your brush size is right about the size of the area you actually want to edit. So for instance, if we're editing our subject's eyelids, just make your brush really small to be about the same size as the eyelid. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Now I've got some keyboard shortcuts that are gonna help out. You can of course make your brush larger and smaller using the open and close brackets, or if you're on a Mac, hold Control and Option and click and drag from the left to the right or up or down. Left or the right is gonna make it larger and smaller. Up and down is gonna make it harder and softer. And the PC keyboard shortcuts are on your screen now as well. So I'm gonna choose a relatively so small soft edge brush here, and we're gonna start painting white on my layer mask, which is just gonna reveal this curves adjustment layer, layer that we made things brighter. So we wanna choose white as a foreground color, and our flow, you wanna choose something really low, like 10%. That's gonna allow you to create a much more realistic appearance. So if you want it to be more visible, simply go over an area a little bit more. There we go. And this is kind of the effect that we're looking for. Now, we're gonna make our brush a little bit larger here. And my job is basically to follow the highlights in my image here, okay? I wanna make these highlights a little bit brighter in my subject's eye as well. So wherever there's highlights here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint over because I want them to just be a little bit brighter. There we go. And because I'm using a low flow, everything should just be really nice and smooth and blend in well with my image. So let's just turn that off and on. There we go, and that looks pretty good. Maybe I'm gonna just paint black on my layer mask right down here, because I don't think we need it as much. Okay, now let's do the same thing over here, painting white on my layer mask. There we go, little highlights over the eye. Okay, fantastic. And then we're gonna choose a larger brush here. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Choose a larger brush and just hit the brow a little bit. Boom, fantastic. Now, the same thing, we're just gonna make our brush a little smaller again. I wanna you know, go ahead and highlight the lip area. So I'm looking for basically you know, defining features on my subject and we wanna just pop a little highlight where those highlights already exist, okay? This is allowing us to kind of enhance, there we go, the shape and features of our subject. Fantastic, so let's just turn this off and on and see how that looks. Really, really nice. Now if you overdo it a little bit, no big deal. You can either lower the opacity of your layer, you can always paint black on your layer mask. For instance, like if I paint white on my layer mask here, and I'm like, let's make her hand lighter, and then you're like, what was I doing? You could just paint black on your layer mask and then make her hand darker again, okay? So it's just a mask, you're just making it visible or invisible. You can also, by the way, double click right here on your curves adjustment layer and just make it brighter or less bright. You can even go darker if you wanted. There we go. Let's go right about there. I think that looks pretty dang good. Maybe just a tiny bit too much on the cheek. So let's just go paint with our black brush a little bit. Fantastic. And by using a low flow, it's very nice and subtle. Eh, it's probably a little bit too bright. Let's go ahead and tone that down a little bit. Fantastic. So that's making things lighter. Oh, you know what? I want to get the hair a little bit too. So let's go back to the brush, uh, back to our layer mask. Boom. I always like to highlight hair because it just makes it look more vibrant. 
Fantastic. Okay, so that's working with our highlights. Now we can basically do the same idea with our shadows. So same thing, we just need a curves adjustment layer and this time we're gonna make it darker. So let's go ahead and grab our curves adjustment layer again. This time we're making it darker. We're gonna hit Control or Command I to invert the layer mask. And now we just wanna focus on some of the darker areas. So we're gonna focus, especially with the eyes, you know, uh, kind of like same principle here is using eye makeup, right? Like the eyelashes and things like that, we're gonna make that a little bit darker. Fantastic. That's just going to help draw a little bit more attention to the light areas. So you can see, I'm not trying to make like huge, huge adjustments here. It's mostly just, uh, here we go. Mostly just trying to enhance the light that's already in the image. Okay, that's where we're gonna find the most, uh, most realistic looking effect and the best bang for your buck. And if you've ever looked at makeup or applied makeup, uh, this is basically kind of the same type of thing that we do in makeup. So, you know, you have like eyeshadow and um, eyeliner and, you know, sometimes people put on fake eyelashes. That What that does is just makes those areas a little bit darker. And basically it makes your eye look lighter in comparison, okay? So all the same techniques that people use with makeup is the same thing that you do with dodging and burning. So you make some areas darker, you make some areas lighter, and it creates that contrast. It basically, it makes your eyes look bigger and you know, like more bright and things like that. So that's kind of the whole deal with what we're doing here. So it's actually super fun. Um, if you're interested in retouching, I actually re recommend checking out some makeup tutorials because you can learn a lot about how professionals apply makeup and then do the same thing with your dodging and burning. Super cool. Okay, so here we have, uh, we're just gonna darken the lower side of the lip again. Boop, just a little bit. There we go, and that's just gonna kind of make that area. <laughs> Oops, I scrolled a little bit too much. Okay, and we're gonna do the lower side of the cheek a little bit as well. Fantastic. So again, this is just it's the same type of sculpting that we see with makeup. You know, people will define their cheeks a little bit, they'll do their lips, they'll do their eyes, and there we go. So these areas get a little darker. So. Those two combined, there's the before and the after. So you can see basically we're just going on the same principles that we would use for makeup. Pretty cool, right? Now we're almost done. The last area I recommend doing is sharpening because this is gonna really draw your viewer's eyes into certain areas of your photo. Now I don't really recommend just sharpening your entire image because it won't enhance certain areas. So you can choose certain areas of your photo that you want to selectively sharpen. And when you're working with portraits, for the most part, you wanna do people's eyes, right? Eyes are the wind of the soul. So you want your viewer to look right at your subject's eyes. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. There are so many different ways to sharpen in Photoshop, by the way. Uh, we're just gonna go show you a very quick and easy way. There's actually a sharpen tool right over here. So if you click on this little eye, it looks like a drop of water, that's the blur tool. There's a sharpen tool here as well. Now with the sharpen tool, you just wanna make sure here at your top that you go to sample all layers. That's super important because we're gonna do this on a new blank layer. We're gonna make sure we protect detail, also super important. Just basically makes your skin texture look a little bit better and reduces pixelization. And your strength about 50% looks good. So here's the deal with this. Uh, you just kind of paint over an area and you keep painting and painting and painting until it looks good. And obviously if you keep doing it, it looks horrible, right? So it's all about balance, okay? Just don't go that far because it looks horrible. Uh, but it's on a new layer. So you can hit Control or Command A, selects all and then just hit the delete key. So there we go. Just paint a little bit, boop, boop, boop. Always make sure you do the eye and the eyelashes, again, it's all about bringing more attention to these areas. Uh, if you wanna just erase a little bit, like I'm just gonna go a little too far right here, so that's obviously too far, just hit E for the eraser tool, okay? And then erase that away, because it's just on a new layer, okay? And then go back to your sharpen tool. Now there are a bunch of different ways to sharpen. I'm showing you a way that I think works well and is very quick and easy. And it's not destructive because it's on a new layer. Okay. 
You can even sharpen some out of focus areas if you want to. Fantastic. And usually I'll do a little bit of lips as well. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's check this out. There's our before and our after. You know what? She's got this awesome thing in her hair. I want to sharpen that too. She's a star. Uh, turn this off and on and look at that. Now again, any area that you're like, oh, that's a little bit too much, just grab your eraser tool and you can just kind of fade it up. You can use your eraser tool with a low flow as well. That'll just kind of like little by little reduce those things. But you can see how much detail and definition we're able to add to the eyes. So let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to group these things together. That's going to be called dodge and burn. There we go. We have our frequency separation, our blemish removal that we did early on. So here's our blemish removal. And then last but not least, we have our sharpening. So let's go ahead and turn all these off and on. I'm going to group them all and we'll just call this retouch. There we go. And we'll just turn these all off and back on again. There we go. Look at that. Now, at this point, I do recommend just turning this off and on and seeing if you like your results because Sometimes we have a tendency to overdo things, or maybe we didn't do, like we underdo things. For me, it's I overdo things all the time. So I turn these things off and on, and I'm like, okay, do I like all the changes that we made? Because you you don't have to be done yet. You can still, it's non-destructive. So you can still go in here and look at your dodge and burn and be like, did I do that too much or too little? Maybe my frequency separation, maybe I overdid that a little bit. So you'll go in here and just lower the opacity of that whole group. Look at that. Okay. Fantastic. There we go. And maybe our dodging, maybe I just, or yeah, our dodging, I think I overdid that a tiny bit too. And maybe I overdid the burning a little bit too. So you could just go back in here and, you know, turn these layers off and on and make sure you're left with a result that looks natural. And I always like to make sure that it looks like my subject. You know, I'm not trying to make something like, I'm not trying to make an apple look like an orange. I just want it to look like a good apple. So turning this off and on, there we go. A nice retouch. These simple steps you can do on any photo and it's gonna make a big, big difference. Thank you so much for watching 30 Days of Photoshop. Up next, we're working on compositing where we're gonna show you how to cut things out of their backgrounds. Thanks again, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.